Hey guys, welcome back to Betsy's Basement. Um, I started doing a couple of these recordings for yoga back in March, I think, maybe early April. If you would have told me I was still doing them in November, I would not have believed you, but here we are. So back in my basement, um, doing a couple more recordings because we are still in quarantine or partial quarantine um, dealing with this pandemic. So this is a very important time to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. I encourage you to um, find some gratitude in the fact that you're mentally, physically able to be on your mat today. And today I'm going to lead you through a 30 minute kind of rejuvenating flow. So I had um, a student request that I do something like this, something that she could do maybe during her lunch break that wouldn't take up her entire lunch break. So not the full hour session, but something that still is going to allow you to have that little bit of quiet in the mind, move the body, find some stillness in the mind, and take care of yourself. Um, so I hope that this accomplishes all that, and I hope that it can be beneficial to all of you. So as we start seated today, we're going to start to notice the sit bones drawing deep into the mat. And as you start to feel the sit bones root down, you're feeling grounded and balanced, connected, start to lengthen the spine. So I'm in this cross-legged position. If this position does not feel good to your hips, if you kind of feel like your knees are somewhere up here, you are welcome to either sit on a block, if you happen to have a block or a rolled up blanket or something else that can give you some support, actually give the sit bones a little bit of height, that might help. You'll see that my knees just dropped a little closer to the mat there. If you simply wanna let your legs stretch long or begin in heroes with the feet coming back and behind you, settling the sit, sit bones back on that block behind you, that's another position you can begin. Some people like to start in child's pose, so feel free to adjust, remembering that it is your practice. As you start to feel the sit bones draw down, the spine begins to lengthen, grow taller as you sit here, as if there's a little string on that top vertebrae drawing you right up, pulling the belly button in. We're going to start with a couple of shoulder rolls, taking the shoulders toward the ears, pull them back, drop back down. Let's go through one more of those. Inhale up pull back, exhale down. Let the hands begin to drop to the knees, noticing the weight of the hands. Tune into all five senses. We're gonna start with about three full long deep breaths. Align the gaze, begin to soften a couple of feet in front of you toward the floor. You might choose to close the eyes if that does not throw off your balance. If you can, let the breath come to the nose. Exhale fully through the nose, push the air all the way out. Pause at the bottom of the breath. Then inhale, also through the nose. Fill the lungs all the way back up. Pause at the top of the breath as well. Long, deep breaths. Once again, we'll just start with about three of these. Allow yourself to begin to find your center. Give thoughts recognition. Try not to add judgment. See if you can clear it away. Last breath here. With the mind a little more clear, take a moment to set an intention for your practice, coming up with some simple process-oriented word, words that come to my mind this afternoon are patience, courage, open-mindedness, strength. It is your practice. You get to choose. Chin comes up just slightly from here. You're still sitting tall. Pull the belly button in, and then let the left ear begin to drop toward the left shoulder. Move on and exhale, switch sides, crown of the head rolls forward nice and slowly, making your way over to the right, full deep breath, and exhale back to the left, crown of the head rolls forward nice and slow. As you make your way back to the left, you might add some gentle pressure, beginning to release the neck even more if that feels okay. The left hand would come toward the right ear, very gently guide the head closer. You might reach back with the right hand, pulling it palm side up, back and behind you. Release the head, soft gaze falls right over the left shoulder. Next inhale, reach a little further back, lift through the crown of the head. Next exhale, soften and relax. Everything comes back to center and we'll switch sides, letting the right ear come back toward the right shoulder. And again, if you wanna add that gentle pressure, right hand comes up and around toward the left ear, drawing the head just a little bit closer, reaching back this time with the right left hand, excuse me. One more breath here. Release the head, soft gaze over the shoulder. Muscles in the face are relaxed. Take a moment to swallow. 
and then exhale, let everything come back to center. Roll through the shoulders again, pause for a breath, and from here we're going to go ahead and move into all fours. So as you let the legs swing back and behind you, some people can push themselves right up and over. We are aiming, as we find horse stance, to move into a joint on joint stack posture. So you've got your fingers spread nice and wide, pulling the weight out of the wrists with that. Knees are right under the hips, feet are hidden right behind the knees. Two or three cat cows here, releasing through the spine. Inhale with the neutral spine. Exhale, cat, round your spine, tuck the tailbone, pull the chin toward the chest. As you inhale, drop into cow. Tailbone rises, gaze rises. Two more. Exhale, cat, releasing through the spine a little bit more. Inhaling in cow. Notice your breath just as much as you're paying attention to the pose. It'll keep you present. You can end on cat or cow, your choice. Spine comes to neutral, that's where we'll meet. And we're gonna go ahead and move right into our first down dog. Tucking the toes back and behind us. Strong legs, lift the hips and begin to settle the heels back toward the mat. Take a moment, make sure your feet are about hip distance apart. Fingers are spread wide, hands are about shoulder distance apart. And as you come into down dog, I'm gonna turn sideways here. You're gonna allow your body to look like that upside down V. So feel the hips and sit bones draw up shoulders sink, and the head is just dangling here. You might shake the head no a couple of times, release through the neck in this inverted position. Let the head kind of just feel heavy. We'll take one more breath here. At the bottom of your breath, let the gaze shift up between the hands. We'll transition forward, stepping or walking toward the front of your mat, coming into our first forward fold. Hamstrings are gonna wake up very quickly here. So as you come into forward fold, it's like your body's a piece of paper folded right in half. If you happen to have a block, it's a great place to reach for one, feel free. You might be naturally reaching for the floor or feet, or some people just like the sensation of the arms dangling. As you keep some softness in the knees throughout the practice, we want to make sure we don't lock out the joints. Relax into it. One more breath here. Inhale, look out and lengthen. As you find monkey, finding that length in the spine, you're going to pull the belly button in, let the back be as flat as it can be, keep your knees soft. You might add lightning warrior arms, reach back from behind you, palm side up, adding some extra work to the triceps. And as we exhale, fold and soften, back to forward fold. To come up and out of this, start to roll up slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Arms can either dangle, maybe slide up the legs for a little more support. As you make your way to standing, take the shoulders back up toward the ears, drop back down, and find mountain for a breath or two. Letting the feet feel grounded, all four corners of both feet drawing down. Legs are nice and long and strong, a little bit of softness in the knees, the tailbone drops, and the arms flow with energy. Move with our breath here. Inhale the arms up. Prayer hands connect above us, arch back gently, reaching, and then we'll release prayer hands to heart center, gaze might follow. This time going into eagle arms, open the arms to the side, expand, reach. And as you come forward, let one arm come on top, wrapping around into those full eagle arms. Or if that feels too intense, you can modify here. You can hug your own back and inch the fingers a little further around. We're aiming for that sensation of the shoulder blades pulling away from one another. Elbows are, start to drop, which is gonna naturally pull the shoulders down. The hands can start to angle away from the face. That's gonna intensify the stretch. Move slowly, listen to your body and exhale, unwind or maybe unhug. Let your arms stretch wide, reach, 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 expand. Come to center, let the other arm come on top. Wrapping again, either into eagle arms or hugging your own back with the other arm on top. Gaze is soft. Take a moment, swallow, soften the muscles in the face and jaw. The hands might start to angle away from the face. If that feels okay on this side, it might feel different on this side. Last breath. Bottom of the breath, unwind, unhug, let the arms stretch wide, reach, reach, reach. And from here, let the hands come back and behind you, interlacing the fingers behind the hips. And you might stay right here, adding that chest expansion. You might add a little bit of a deeper shoulder stretch. Let the hands begin to pull further and further away from the body. It's nothing you want to force. It just depends on how open your shoulders are feeling today. And release back down, interlace the fingers in front of the heart, draw the hands away from the body, round the spine, tuck the tailbone. Start to slowly find length in the spine, hands rise, gaze can follow. 
flip the hands over, drop the shoulders, arch back gently, and release the arms back down to mountain to the asana. Full breath. Warming up with some sunbeams and moonbeams from here. We're gonna take a moment to widen our stance first. So we're gonna keep the heels on the mat, let the balls of the feet come off the mat. Got an angle to the feet so the knees are gonna to start to aim toward the second toe as we drop into these. Next inhale, let your arms sweep wide. Come into an X pattern or a star pattern. Here, expand, inhale, and exhale. Drop down into your squat, letting the elbows come in toward the waist as you lower. This is a flow, so as you inhale, expand, arch back. As you exhale, lower down. These are called sunbeams. We'll go through about three more. Inhale, expand. Exhale, drop down. Trying to resist momentum, so keep it nice and slow. Last one like this. Inhale, expand, reach. Exhale, drop down. Keep your stance. Inhale, rise, expand. Exhale, hinge at the hips, bend into the knees as you go into these sort of yoga plies. We want to keep length on the spine as we hinge at the hips. Drawing forward, leading with the heart. About three more of these. Exhale down. Inhale, draw up. Once again, keep it as slow and controlled as you can, continuing to move with your breath. Last one. As you come up, let prayer hands draw together, arch back and then slowly begin to drop into your squat. Prayer hands come into heart center and hold. Full breath here. For some people, it feels okay to drop into full garland. If you've got that flexibility, you continue to drop the hips. Let the elbows come right between the knees so they're wedged between the knees. The sit bones drop, the heart lifts, breathe. And then from wherever you happen to be, start to push into the feet and rise. Prayer hands shift past the gaze, arch back gently. Release the arms back down step the feet back into mountain posture pause for a breath here in mountain tadasana check in with your intention moving through a sun salutation a from here move with your breath inhale the arms up prayer hands connect arch back gently exhale fold lead with the heart swan dive down and settle into your forward fold next inhale look out and lengthen exhale fold Bend the knees, hands come next to the feet, transition back, stepping or walking to full plank, or you can drop to the knees and find kneeling plank. Feel free to modify, it's your practice. As we exhale, we'll lower through Chaturanga Dandasana, nice and slow, go ahead and drop to the belly for this first one, and drop into Cobra. Strength of the back lifts the heart. Pushing through child's pose to down dog, or if you wanna take a breath or two in child's pose, feel free, you can find down dog when you're ready. As you settle back into your downward facing dog, let your head dangle, pull all 10 fingers deep into the mat. Heels are getting closer and closer to the mat as you feel your hamstrings get longer. Last breath here. Bottom of the breath, gaze comes up between the hands, transition forward, stepping, walking, or if you're practicing your hop, you can hop forward, forward fold. Soft knees, heavy torso, full deep breath here. To come up this time, find length in the spine first. Keep this slow, reverse swan dive up, arms sweep wide. Prayer hands draw together above us, arch back gently. Release prayer hands to heart center. They might stay there, maybe fall to the side, Tadasana Mountain, take a breath. One more of those, we're gonna add to it here at the end though. Inhale the arms up, prayer hands connect, arch back. Exhale, fold, leave with the heart, swan dive down and relax, forward fold. As you inhale, look out and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, hands come next to the feet, transition back, stepping, walking, or maybe hop back, plank. Exhale through Chaturanga Dandasana, aim to hover. Inhale, cobra, or up dog this time. Tops of the feet and the hands come in contact with the mat, draw your knees up. And exhale back, downward facing dog. If you wanna flow through child's pose, take a moment there, feel free. We'll take about two more breaths here. We will be moving from our downward facing dog here in a moment. Full inhale, let the breath be nourishing. Full exhale. Last one. At the bottom of the breath, three-legged dog, let the left foot draw back and behind you. 
Drop your hips slightly, see if you can lift the foot even higher. Then let the gaze come up between the hands, step your foot through. Scooch it forward if need be. Pivot the right heel away from you to create a 45 degree angle. So we're setting up for a warrior series. When you're ready, you can start to either climb up the thigh, lifting the heart, moving forward your warrior one. Maybe it feels okay just to circle sweep the arms right up into warrior one. You're gonna feel your hips and your shoulders draw as much as they can to the short side of the mat. A lot of strength in the front leg, a lot of length in the back. Full inhale here. And exhale, warrior two. Let the hips draw off to the long side of the mat. You're gonna feel a nice deep stretch through the inner front thigh of that left leg, and arms are flowing with energy. As we exhale here, reverse warrior. Right hand drops back, left hand reaches up, or maybe a little further back. You've got that space through the neck. The gaze traditionally wants to creep right up toward the ceiling. You can always adjust toward the floor if that's better for your balance. From reverse warrior, warrior two. Warrior two into extended side angle, bending the front arm, coming forward so that arm can rest right on the thigh, right hand reaching up or over the ear here. Some people have a tendency for that front hand to want to drop all the way to the mat, or maybe if you happen to have a block, you can place a block on the outside of the foot. It has three different heights. You might add a chest expansion here. Take the right hand and wrap the waist back and behind you, feeling the heart draw even further open. If it's okay for your body to go into a full lock, other hand might reach underneath, interlace the fingers with one another and come into that full bind. It's nothing you wanna force yourself into. Last breath here. If you are bound, unbind, we're moving from extended side angle. Let the gaze shift over the front foot. One hand comes to either side of the front foot, pivot on the back foot, making our way back to down dog, or maybe dropping to the knees and finding child's pose for a couple of breaths. You might continue to pedal your heels a couple of times if you're in your downward facing dog, release through the legs and hips. Notice how the left leg feels different than the right. Let's take one more breath here. So again, we will be moving from down dog, going through that series on the other side. Next exhale, right foot draws back and behind you, three-legged dog. Drop your hip, lift the foot, foot is pointed or flexed, maybe floated, which is sort of like a Barbie foot. Gaze comes up between the hands, step the foot through. Pivot the left heel away from you. Plant both feet, nice firm foundation. And then again, you might start to climb up the thigh, lifting the chest, moving towards your warrior one. When you feel ready, it might feel okay to draw right up into the full expression. If that does not feel okay, you can keep the hands resting on the thighs, or maybe it feels better for prayer hands to be at heart center. Reaching up's gonna be the hardest challenge on your balance, and more work for your shoulders. You can also adjust a goal post arm if that feels better. On your next exhale, split the arms, warrior two. Front knee just easing toward the pinky toe, arms flowing with energy, soft gaze, try to keep your shoulders right over top of the hips. Exhale, reverse warrior, left hand drops back, right hand reaches up, maybe a little further back, drawn into that gentle back bend type pose. So you're gonna support that with the core. From reverse warrior, warrior two, warrior two into extended side angle, bend the front arm, draw forward, let it rest on the thigh. Left arm reaching up, or again, right over the ear. Keep the heart open. Notice the line you've created from the fingertips down to your extended heel. If you're wanting to add that chest expansion, left hand might wrap back and behind the waist, pulling the heart even further open. To go into that full lock, the right hand would reach underneath, interlace the fingers, and create that full line. Let's pause for one more breath here. If you are bound, unbind extended side angle. Let the gaze shift over the front foot. One hand comes to either side, pivot on the back foot, step back, down dog, or again, you're welcome to drop to the knees and relax into child's pose for a breath or two. Listening to your body today. Two more breaths here. Let your shoulders drop, let your heels sink even closer to the mat. And moving from down dog from here, we'll let the gaze shift up between the hands, step walk, maybe practice your hop, forward fold. 
Full breath here. If you want to add a deeper stretch to your forward fold, keeping some softness in the knees, you might add a bind or grasp. Grasping opposite elbows, creating a frame for the face, dropping you a little bit deeper into the posture. Maybe you wrap the hands around the calves, use the calves as leverage to pull the chest down, or maybe you take a toe grasp. Peace fingers and the thumbs would grasp for the big toes. With this, inhale, look out and lengthen first, and then exhale, draw down. Last breath here. Release any binder grasp you might have. Find length in the spine. Nice and slow, reverse one, that up, arms sweep wide. Prayer hands draw together above us. Arch back gently. Release prayer hands to heart center. Maybe they stay there. Maybe the arms drop to the side. Tadasana, mountain. Check in with your intention. Pull yourself back to the present moment. From here, we're gonna go through a wide leg forward fold series. It's gonna help kind of release through the inner thighs and hamstrings after those working poses of warrior. So let's face the same direction, I'll go this direction and widen your stance. So as you widen your stance, you're gonna keep your feet parallel to the short sides of the mat. We're gonna start with the hands on the hips. As you inhale, feet are planted, inhale, add a very gentle arch to the back, gaze rises. Then as we exhale, start to fold forward. When you're about halfway down, the hands can leave the hips and reach right for the mat in front of you, or if you happen to have a block, you can use a block here, relaxing into your wide leg forward fold. Some people have the flexibility and it feels good to grasp for ankles here, so you're welcome to do that if that works for you, pulling the crown of the head even closer and closer to the mat. Last breath here at center. From here, look out and lengthen. We're going to walk the hands over to the left first. As you walk over to the left, you might grasp for the foot, the ankle, the calf, or a block. Very gently let the chest get closer to the left thigh. Notice the C curve in the spine, a deeper stretch on the right side of the back than the left. You might add a reach from here. Let the left hand begin to drift right up toward the sky. Very gentle twist through the spine. We always want length in the spine when we twist, so notice that. Left hand comes down if you've added it. Look out and lengthen to transition through center over to the right. Walking the hands over to the right foot, ankle, calf, maybe a block here, and release the chest toward the right side. Pause for a breath here. Maybe the right hand drifts up. Opening the heart, adding that very gentle slight twist. Last breath here. If the hand is up, let the hand come down, look out and lengthen, walk back to center. And we'll take our last breath here. Find length in the spine to come up, let the hands return to the hips to come up. So we're coming up the same way we went down, push into the feet, use the core, and begin to make your way to standing. You might start to heel toe your feet together, you might hop your feet together, take a big step, get your feet together, and then go ahead and make your way back toward the front of the mat. Maybe you bend into the knees a couple of times, roll your shoulders a couple of times. Take a moment to very slowly, gently roll through the neck. From here, we'll go through tree before we make our way down to the mat for some seated postures. So trees are standing balance pose. You are always welcome to make your way over to a wall or to a piece of furniture that you might have nearby for some stability as opposed to just um, staying on your mat. So make Sure that you're adjusting to make it work for you today. We're gonna to start on the left foot. Take any moment to feel the left foot stay grounded in length, run right up the left leg, then take the weight out of the right foot. Prayer hands can be at heart center, the foot can just be right on the mat with the heel rest, resting above the ankle. Maybe you draw the foot a little further up. Maybe you take the right hand and pull the foot all the way up into the inner thigh. The knee is gonna pull back, no matter where you have the foot perched on the leg. If your tree wants to grow, you might let it. Prayer hands might stay connected or you might choose to let your branches spread wide. Some people like the arms stretched in a full T. One more breath here. Prayer hands return to heart center if they aren't already there. And we'll step out of the pose. If you want to bend into your knees or roll your shoulders before you move over to the other side, feel free, take a nice deep breath. And then we're gonna make our way over to the right for tree. Plant the right foot, 
pull the kneecap up so you're feeling length and strength in the leg and then take the weight out of the left foot moving into your version of tree on this side maybe you take the left hand and pull the foot all the way up into the thigh try to not add pressure directly to your opposite knee the tailbone more actively tucks when we try to balance so as you feel that tailbone actively drop you're going to feel the lower abdominals engage it's going to help with balance help create a root lock mula bandha. Your tree might have grown, you might choose to let it grow, challenge your balance a little bit more, branches might spread wide, or again, you can just play around with your arm placement. Last breath. Prayer hands come back to heart center if they aren't already there. And we'll step out of the pose. And again, you can bend into your knees a couple of times, roll your shoulders a little bit, take a moment, to once again find Tadasana Mountain. Full deep breath. Let's begin again, fresh with our breath. We're gonna work our way down from here. Inhale the arms up. Prayer hands connect, arch back gently, reaching, and then slowly swan dog down, lead with your heart, move into your forward fold. Taking a moment as you pause in forward fold to notice how much deeper it feels in your first forward fold belt. Next inhale, look out and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, hands come next to the feet. We'll transition back, stepping or walking to full plank or a kneeling plank, your choice. Exhale through Chaturanga Dandasana, aim to hover. Inhale, cobra up dog. And from here, drop to the knees. Exhale back into child's pose. Full deep breath in child's pose. We'll just take one. Enjoy the feeling of rest. Let the body feel soft and heavy. And then start to roll up from here. You might take a moment perched right on the heels and heroes. When you're ready from here, let your hips shift to the side so your legs can end up long in front of you. Making your way to that seated position with the legs stretched long. We're gonna find staff, Dandasana, just for a breath or so. Take a moment, rock back and forth. Make sure the sit bones have that nice deep connection with the mat. As the legs stretch long, you can flex the feet. Heels might pop up, drop the shoulders, and let the hands just barely rest next to the hips. We do not wanna push into the hands to sit taller. Let your neck stay relaxed, let your face stay soft. And then slowly from here, arms begin to sweep wide, reach up. Exhale, fold. Reaching for feet, ankles, calves, whatever you comfortably can. If you happen to have a strap or a shirt, you can kind of wrap that around your feet and use that as leverage to draw down. Last breath here. Walk the hands back up. Shake out your legs a little bit. We're gonna move into a seated twist from here. Let's bend into the left knee first. Draw the left foot close to the body. Then we'll cross over. As you cross over, you're going to feel a nice stretch through the outer hip. If you've got pretty open hips, it might feel okay here to tuck the other leg underneath and feel an even deeper stretch through your hips. What you don't want to do here is be kind of over to the side, though. We want to make sure both sit bones can come all the way down toward the mat. If they can't, go ahead and just keep the leg long in front of you. We're going to hug the knee in with the opposite elbow. So the right elbow is hugging in the left knee. We'll inhale the left arm up, back, and behind this. Letting the fingertips face away from the hips for better leverage. If you've got that leg extended, flex the front foot, make it a little more active, protect your knee. Inhale, grow a little taller, see if your spine can even lengthen more. Exhale, you might twist deeper. Gaze is drifting right over the left shoulder. And then slowly untwist, come back around. Uncross, let the other leg stretch long if you happen to have it tucked underneath, and we're gonna let our left knee just drop open toward the side. Feeling that gentle hip opening with this, square off to your extended leg, inhale, arms sweep wide, reach up. Exhale, fold forward here. And again, you might use a strap. You can wrap a strap right around the foot. You might reach for the calf, the ankle. You might be naturally reaching for the foot. Let's take one more breath here. Move into a side stretch. Keep the right hand wherever it happens to be so that you can open the heart. Let the left arm reach over the left ear towards your right foot. 
One more breath here, nice long line all the way down the left side of the body. And then slowly we'll start to come up. Allowing the legs to stretch long in front of you, shake out your legs a little bit before we go through that on the other side. So we're gonna move into our twist, bending into the right knee. Right foot comes close to the body, cross over. And once again, it might feel okay to tuck this foot underneath, allowing the sit bones to come close to, or all the way down to the mat. Otherwise, let the legs stay long. Hug the knee in with your left elbow. Inhale the right arm up, back, and behind you. Moving into our twist, keeping length in the spine. Inhale, maybe grow taller if you have that space. Exhale, you might be able to twist deeper. Some people like to even take the elbow to the outside of the knee, so feel free to make that adjustment. Gaze is drifting over the right shoulder. Exhale, untwist. Come back around, uncross. Let the leg stretch long if you had it tucked underneath, and we're gonna let the right knee drop open. Settle the sit bones. The knee begins to pull toward the mat. Inhale, arms sweep wide, reach up. Exhale, fold. Reaching again for the foot, the ankle, the calf, or a strap here. Last breath here. Move into your side stretch. Keep the left hand where it is. Open the heart. Right arm reaches over the right ear towards your left foot. Nice long line all the way down the side of the body. Kind of a similar feeling as we had an extended side angle. And then slowly start to come back up, using the core to keep that movement slow. Let both legs stretch long, settle the sit bones, shake out the legs a little bit, and then slowly let your arms sweep wide, reach up. And we'll exhale back into a seated forward bend, helping to neutralize the spine after that twisting. And exhale, walk the hands right back up the legs. Shake out your legs a little bit. Allow your sit bones to come toward the middle of the mat so you've got a little space behind you and you're gonna set yourself up for boat, which is an abdominal working pose. We wanna start with the bend in the knees, about hip distance between your feet, about hip distance between your knees. Let the chest kind of begin to draw right up toward the ceiling so you're not allowing yourself to slump with this. Grasp behind the thighs. Begin to take the weight from the sit bones and kind of tip back gently so you're resting right on the sacrum, right at the top of the tailbone, base of the spine. You can stay here, you're gonna feel some work here. You might go ahead and lift your feet to add a little more work. You might begin to release your hands to add even more work. So as you come into boat, you're lifting the chest. If you want full boat, you're gonna find full length on the legs. Three, it's gonna add more work to the quadriceps. Two, one more breath. One, and sit tall for a breath. You might widen the knees, take a moment, rock back and forth a couple of times, feel that release. And then from here, we're gonna move into cobblers, letting the soles of the feet come together. Inch the heels a little closer in maybe, interlace your fingers, wrap the feet, bounce your knees a couple of times to begin. And then you can just stay right here, pulling the knees down, sitting as tall as you can. If it does not bother your low back, you might start to fold forward, Moving into the full expression of cobblers or bound angle, it's also called. One more breath here. At the bottom of the breath, start to come back up. And again, it might feel good to bounce the knees a couple of times. We're gonna move into a fully reclined position from here. I'm gonna turn my mat to the side for that. So as you prepare to go down to that fully reclined position, Grasp behind the thighs as if you were going to go back into boat, but this time go ahead and round your spine so you can ease down one vertebrae at a time, ending up in that fully reclined position. Draw the knees toward the chest, gentle hug. Take a moment, rock back and forth a couple of times, massaging the back into the mat. Back to center with your rocking. Let the feet come down to the floor, keeping the knees bent. Plant the hands next to the body, palms side down. Inch your heels a little closer. And then we're gonna move into bridge from here. Push it into the feet, lifting the hips, peeling the spine up off the mat. So the weight ends up in the shoulders. We do not wanna crunch up the neck here. For some people, it feels good to interlace the fingers beneath, roll the shoulders toward one another. 
If anybody's craving some extra work here, this is optional. You might plant one foot at a leg lift, let the other foot draw up. And then switch sides. If you've added it, let that foot come down. We'll take one more breath and bridge. If you have the fingers interlaced beneath you, release. Let your shoulders come down. Then nice and slow, let your spine come down. One vertebrae at a time. From there, pull the knees to the chest, gentle hug. And again, you might rock back and forth a few times, massaging the back into the mat. Come back to center with your rocking, reach into the inner arches of flex feet, finding happy babies. You're pulling bent knees a little closer to the mat. You're welcome to add a rocking motion here, back and forth a couple of times. Back to center with your rocking. Let the soles of the feet come together. Release the feet to the mat so that the knees can drop open to the sides. We're in a reclined cobblers. You might take the hands to the inner thighs, use the hands as leverage to add a gentle rocking motion here, massaging right at the low back. And then from here, let the hands come away from the body, palm side up. Pausing for two or three breaths here, allowing the body to find a place of quiet, of stillness, noticing the movement coming with the breath. Letting the body rest after work. Find some gratitude in what your body's been able to do today. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Last breath here. Slowly from here, draw the knees back to the chest, gentle hug. We'll slowly release and begin to roll over onto our right side using our right arm as a pillow to support the head. Pause for a breath here. And then we'll start to push ourselves up into a comfortable seated posture. Maybe the same position we began class. Sit bones are rooting down, you're sitting tall, weight of the hands draped to the knees. Ending the practice here with the breath together. Slowly begin to inhale the arms up. You'll feel prayer hands connect above you. You might choose to gaze upon prayer hands, checking in with your intention one more time and then slowly releasing for our hands to heart center. What is good and true and honorable in me bows to what is good and true and honorable in you. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.